Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and today we are here for another poetry discussion. A poetry discussion that comes to us from Philip Levine. This is the first time I have ever read Philip Levine, so this was a, um, a nice surprise. The poem in question is titled, What Work Is, and it reads as such. We stand in the rain, in a long line, waiting at Fort Highland Park for work. You know what work is. If you're old enough to read this, you know what work is. Although you may not do it. Forget you. This is about waiting, shifting from one foot to another, feeling the light rain falling like mist into your hair, blurring your vision until you think you see your own brother ahead of you, maybe ten places. You rub your glasses with your fingers, and of course it's someone else's brother narrower across the shoulders than yours, but with the same sad slouch, the grin that does not hide the stubbornness, the sad refusal to give in to rain, to the hours wasted waiting, to the knowledge that somewhere ahead a man is waiting who will say, no, we're not hiring today, for any reason he wants. You love your brother. Now suddenly you can hardly stand the love flooding flooding you for your brother, who's not beside you or behind or ahead because he's home trying to sleep off a miserable night shift at Cadillac so he can get up before noon to study his German, works eight hours a night so he can sing Wagner, the opera you hate most, the worst music ever invented. How long has it been since you've told him you loved him, held his wide shoulders, opened your eyes wide and said those words, and maybe kissed him on the cheek. You've never done something so simple, so obvious. Not because you're too young or too dumb. Not because you're jealous or even mean or incapable of crying in the presence of another man. No. Just because you don't know what work is. <clears throat> so, I think that it is... Um, the it is important to acknowledge the minor reality happening in this poem so the major reality happening is that these are hard times uh, our speaker here is waiting in line for work our speaker our speaker here is waiting in line for which he expects fully to be told there will be no work um in today's world, in, in the easy times in which we live, this very perspective of waiting in line for work. How many people do you know that don't want to go to the job they have, the job they know will be waiting for them, let alone to wait up, wake up in the middle of the night like I'm going to get an iPhone only to be told there's no work? The prospect of that, the reality of that for our speaker, the sad reality of that, the hard times financially, have led to a hard time emotionally. Our speaker breaks. That's the minor reality here. Our speaker, suffering through the hard times financially, breaks emotionally. The hard times financially lead to difficult times emotionally. Breaks so much so, you could say uh, he is mistaking someone for his brother, but that's rigmarole, right? Basically, more or less, he's hallucinating his own brother. And in that moment, in that sadness, discovers in himself the fact that he's never hold, held his brother and told his brother that he loves him. What a hell of a thing. It is the... It is the difficult time that this speaker had persisted through until this moment. Um, so, I want to read something else here. This is from the Daily Stoic. This is from the February 16th, 
um, entry to the Daily Stoic. I also talk about the Daily Stoic on my personal channel. There's a link to my personal channel in the description below, if you're so inclined. Um, February 16th, the subheading for the day, don't make things harder than they need to be. The quote here given to us um, by our authors from Marcus Aurelius in Meditations reads as such. If someone asks you to write your name, would you bark out each letter? And if they get angry, would you let them, would you then return the anger? Wouldn't you rather gently spell out each letter for them? So then, remember in life that your duties are the sum of individual acts. Pay attention to these, to each of these, as you do your duty. Just methodically complete your task. And our authors go on to explicate, here's a common scenario. You're working with a frustrating co-worker or a difficult boss. Then, you, then they ask you to do something and because you dislike the messenger, you immediately object. There's this problem or that one, or their request is obnoxious and rude. So you tell them, no, I'm not going to do it. Then they retaliate by not doing something that you had previously asked of them. And so the conflict escalates. Meanwhile, if you could step back and see it objectively, you probably see that not everything they're asking for is unreasonable. In fact, some of it uh, is pretty easy to do or is at least agreeable. And if you did it, it might make the rest of the tasks a bit more tolerable too. Pretty soon, you've done the entire thing. Life, and our job, is difficult enough. Let's not make it harder by getting emotional about insignificant matters or digging in for battles we know we can't actually we don't actually care about. So what we have here is not maybe our speaker giving in to the emotional state of matters. Maybe it's the it's the physical state of matters breaking our speaker. Um and that's a bit different, isn't it? Is sort of the opposite take on that. Uh, so the um, the sort of explication there is of being emotional and then giving it back. The reality in this poem is that the world has broken. The world breaks everyone. The world has broken our speaker, who gives in to emotion, but not anger does not give in to the emotion of anger, gives in to a reflective sort of sad emotion. Um, and I want to go towards those last couple lines. So the implication is made at the beginning of this poem. You know what work is. If you're old enough to read this, you know what work is. We go out, we stand in line, we're asked to move bags of sand. I think it was Cinderella Man, right? We're asked to move these bags of sand, and that is work. It's what we do. Until the end of the poem. I can show up and wait in line. I've done that before. I can be told there is no work. I've done that before. I can stand up, wait in line, wobble from foot to foot because I'm so tired and sore, and then be given work and do that. I know that work. That's not work. You've never done something so simple, so obvious. Not because you're too young or too dumb. Not because you're jealous or even mean or incapable of crying in the presence of another man. No, just because you don't know what work is. What work is here, the implication being made, work is the emotional stuff. The hard part is the emotional stuff. So there's a term called presentness. And what it means is, basically, in the Stoic sense, in the meditation sense, and uh, the sort of spiritual sense, 
existing in the now. That's simple enough. That seems simple enough. That seems pretty obvious, kind of on the nose. But is it? Is it simple? Even now, even if you're watching this, your mind's all sorts of places. Maybe you're thinking about how stupid my shirt is. Maybe you're trying to read the books behind me. Maybe you are actually um, in the back of your mind dealing with something that you didn't say at work. None of that is being present. Multitasking is not being present. And what does it mean to not be present when we're with the ones we love, when we're with the ones we profess that we love, when we're with the ones we're supposed to love. There's a very interesting thought from Sam Harris. I can't remember if it's in Free Will or um, Waking Up. I think it's in Waking Up. He talks about having to be present with his child. I think it's a daughter. I think Sam Harris has a daughter. I have to be present with my daughter. I have to be mindful with my daughter. Mindfulness is another sort of uh, term on these, on these same wavelengths. And he says, A sad reality is that someday I will have picked up my daughter for the last time. Someday... That statement will be true. I don't know what day that is. My mother doesn't pick me up at 36 years old, right? Some day was the last time she picked me up. It's a very sad, sobering reality for a parent. Some day will be the last time I see my sister. Some day will be the last time that I see my niece. All of these things are invariably, inevitably true. We have no way to prepare for them. But upon their realization, we can diminish their power. By being present, by being mindful. By knowing in the presence for me of my niece, someday will be the last time that I pick her up. I have to make a point of realizing when I have her in my arms, I'm really holding my niece. This is real. This is happening. That is, in my opinion, very much what this poem by Philip Levine is about, what work is, Starting with the assumption that you know work is labor, work is movement, work is struggle. We are lured in to that assumption in this poem. We are lured in to that assumption by our speaker. Only to have the rug pulled out from under us and have it revealed that the real work is the emotional stuff, is knowing. I have not held my brother by the shoulders, those wide shoulders, and told him I loved him. Uh, that is all I have for this poetry discussion. I hope to have you back for another poetry discussion at some point. I have videos on the channel every Friday at least. And I hope to have you back for the next one.